The purpose of this video is to discuss the camera equipment you need to photograph a total solar eclipse. If you are a basic photographer, you may already have what you need with your present equipment except for a high quality sturdy tripod and the proper solar filter. I'm going to discuss and demonstrate issues with two Sigma zoom lenses. This 70 to 300 millimeter lens, which is quite affordable and a common lens, and a higher quality 50 to 500 um, Sigma lens, and then two 2x teleconverters for these lenses, which will double the focal length. I'm also going to discuss two Nikon cameras, a film camera, the Nikon N90S, and a digital SLR, the D5000, which is a 12.3 megapixel camera. First, we have to understand that these two old zoom lenses were designed for the old film cameras. This means that the image that hits the back of the camera where the film is, is actually a circle of the image that exposes the entire rectangle of a 35 millimeter film, which is a rectangle about 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. If this dot represents the image circle at the back of the camera, with old film cameras and lenses for those cameras, the circle of the image would expose the rectangle of the 35 millimeter film. The first digital SLR cameras had a sensor in the back where the film used to be. But sensors were so expensive they did not put in a sensor that was as big as the rectangle of 35 millimeter film. The early sensors were smaller and came at a number of different sizes depending on the camera. So those sensors only captured a small rectangle in the center of the image at the back of the camera. This piece of cardboard represents a image sensor. This is called the crop factor. It's cropping the center of the image hitting the back of the camera. But when you look at the image you took yourself, it looks as if you zoomed into the middle section of the image. So in a way, you are getting a somewhat fake increase in the focal length of your zoom lens when you use an old zoom lens on a new digital SLR camera with a smaller than full frame sensor. Digital cameras then came out with full size sensors in the back, but these are much more expensive. So you need to know what the crop factor is of your digital SLR camera. This way you can calculate what the focal length is of the zoom lenses that you own. Nikon uses the initials DX for their small sensor cameras. Your goal is to get to a focal length between 800 millimeters and 1200 millimeters so you can capture an adequate sized sun image to have some detail. With this zoom lens on a film camera, if I zoom to 50 millimeters, the field of view of the resulting image will be a 50 millimeter focal length image. However, if I took this old zoom lens off of this film camera and put it on this DX sensor camera, there would be a 1.5 crop factor, which would make the resulting image have a field of view of a 75 millimeter zoom lens. Now that we've talked about sensor size and crop factor, let's talk a little bit more about zoom lenses. This basic Sigma telephoto lens has marks on it to zoom from 70 millimeters to 100 millimeters to 135 millimeters, 200 millimeters, and 300 millimeters. If I had a 2x teleconverter and I put it on this lens and put it back on the camera, it would double the focal length of this lens. So the lens would then be 140 millimeters to 600 millimeters. 
if I took this combination of lens and 2x teleconverter and put it on a digital SLR camera with a small sensor with a 1.5 crop factor, now I have a telephoto lens that is 210, 300, 405, 600, and 900 millimeters. 900 millimeters is a long enough focal length to do basic eclipse photography. And again, you might already have this equipment at home. Let's talk about the bigger Sigma telephoto lens that is 50 to 500 millimeters. This lens has markings on it that zoom from 50 to 100 to 200, 300, 400, and 500 millimeters. If I took a 2x teleconverter and put it on this lens and put this combination on a full frame film camera, I now would have a telephoto lens that went from 100 millimeters to 1,000 millimeters. 1,000 millimeters is a nice focal length for full sun disk solar eclipse photography. If I put this combination on a Nikon camera with a 1.5 crop factor, I now have a lens that goes from 150 millimeters to 1500 millimeters. 1500 millimeters may be too long for total solar eclipse photography because at totality, when you expose for the full corona, some of the corona will be outside the margins of the image. So the range of focal length that is good for eclipse photography to get a full corona is between 900 millimeters and 1200 millimeters. Today I did some quick images of the sun at different focal lengths to show you the relative size of the sun disk at those different focal lengths. Here's 300 millimeters. I didn't spend a lot of time on focus. Here's 600 millimeters. I also didn't balance the exposures. 900 millimeters. You can see now that at 900 and 1000 millimeters, it's a good sun disk image and enough room for the corona. Here's 1200 millimeters. 1500 millimeters is getting a little big. Here is a total eclipse max corona shot that I took a thousand millimeters at a half a second exposure. So you see a thousand millimeters to 1200 millimeters is a good focal length.